Well, I, want to, I want to roll the footage that you got. Okay. So you could say something like, um, I just want to say how much we got. So, oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> that's all right. <laughs> One more patch. That's all right. Sorry. That's all right. Talk about the insulation and the nails and, um, but it's daytime. So, I mean, it's, you're right. That's all right, Johnny. Don't worry about it, man. Are you okay? That, that is my first time too, by the way. All right. Well, <laughs> I'm glad I'm I could. I'm glad we could. Time. There must be something going on in this area. We we should. <laughs> I guess if I'm going to have the time, this would be the time. Sure, this would be <laughs> right. the one I mean, to do. Somebody yeah. needs to keep a, they're not under construction. We're going in there to fix. Oh, them. yeah. You don't want to go through a finish. Now you're here. painting a whole house. Uh -huh. Hey gang, welcome back to the channel. I'm Paul with Studpack. In our previous video, you saw Jordan and I remove all the old oak strip flooring and the parquet flooring from this area of our remodel. And then we rented that floor buffer with the carbide attachment to scrape all the glue off. That came out great. Super happy that's done. And tomorrow morning, bright and early, our electricians show up to wire this place. Woo. But I had a few things to do to get ready for them. And one of them was right here in this wall by the pantry where we have our TV niche. We didn't frame it up at all because I didn't know how high to put this thing or what electrical I needed, but it's all done, so let me walk you through it. So I left this stud here and our jack studs there holding up our beam, and I put this board here four foot above the finished floor right here. Put in this stud, measured up 18 and a half to the bottom of this one, put in this guy and this stud. And that gave me this opening, which a 32 inch TV will just barely fit in. And if I put quarter inch drywall on the inside of this, I gain a half an inch. So I think I'll probably do that. It's pretty tight, but it'll fit. So come around the other side and we'll show you the back. I've got three quarter inch plywood pocket screwed in the back of our opening. That's gonna give me plenty of support to mount the TV. The wires for the TV, the power and the cable for the picture will plug in on this side. Here's our, this will be for a plug and here's our cable. And then we'll tidy all the wires up, maybe cover them, paint them, whatever. So it looks all nice inside the pantry. So we got this niche all done. The owner saw it, got inspired, went online and thought, where else can we put a niche in this kitchen? So they sent me a text last night wondering if we could put one over the range. So let's walk over here and we'll show you what we're gonna do. Now you can see yesterday I started putting up my blocking for my cabinets. I got my blocking for my lower cabinets. So I have one more row of blocking to put for the top of our upper cabinets but I'm glad I didn't do it because we have to take all this out. We're gonna build an oversized niche here. Why would you need a niche? Say you're here cooking eggs in the morning or you're searing that steak at night and you're like, man, where's my lemon pepper? Where's my ground pepper? Where's my salt? We've all been there like, oh, I gotta turn away from that steak. I hope it doesn't burn, go find what you need. Well, we're gonna have it all right here. In that niche, it's gonna be beautiful. But we're not sure what size yet, so we're gonna frame it oversized drywall the whole thing, and then cut the opening that we want, centered on our range at the height we need later. But the first thing we gotta do is take off this drywall. Let's get that done right now. All right, that drywall is down, two sheets, super easy. Now we have a 30 inch wide electric range going right here between these two 27 inch wide cabinets. I need to know my final location. So see this window stool right here? We had to move this cabinet to the left so that this drawer would clear that. You gotta plan ahead. That would be a bad day if you open that drawer and it hit that, wouldn't it? So now that we know where our cabinets are gonna go, I'm gonna put a mark here and here. Now we're going to move the cabinets and we're going to put a stud way out here and way out here. So our cabinets are in their final location. Now the niche in this wall is not going to be wider than the 30 inch range. So we're going to remove this framing right here, move it back to where my hand is so there are no studs in the middle. Then we're going to show you what we're going to do after that. But for right now, let's get these cabinets out of the way and take these studs and this blocking out of our way also.
All right, gang, this is going super quick. Got our new studs in. I'm just kind of using what I had out back. This is a load bearing wall, but all it's holding up is this little bitty ceiling. So I didn't have to worry about supporting this. I had a four by four out there. So we just used some six inch structural screws that we had on the table, fastened it together. And now our new studs are under that four by four. But again, very little load up there. So we're gonna put a horizontal piece here with a stud in the middle, a horizontal piece here, and the space between those two horizontal pieces and these two studs will be where our future niche is gonna be. So let's measure that and go outside and cut them and finish this thing. Times two. All right, cool, that's done. All right, gang, it's the next day. Remember, yesterday we framed up this niche, so I thought I'd put a piece of plywood up here above it. That'll give us plenty of backing for our new hood. That's gonna be awesome when we hang that. And as you can tell, we actually have wires. There's a lot going on today and yesterday. This place is hopping. Let me walk you through what we've done since then. Let's start right down here with the range outlet. We have an all electric range and we've talked previously before about cut sheets. This is the cut sheet for our range, and this shaded area is the appropriate place where they want the outlet. Now, it's, I only have seven inches from here to the top in that shaded area, so it's gotta be pretty low. So it's all ready to go. The ground is bonded to the box with a jumper, and I used a crimp connector to connect the two wires. I actually have these Buchanan C, what are they, C24 crimpers. There's probably five of our viewers that have these, but I love them. If you don't have those, a little split bolt connector would work fine right here. And if you don't have that, old wire nut. So this is a four and 11 16 box, pretty big. I like that size for ranges because the outlet is big and this wire is big, it gives me more room. So I can mount this box either direction and the mud ring would mount either direction. I like to mount the mud rings horizontally because ovens have a right angle plug on them. And I want the cord coming off to the right or the left. If I did it this way, that cord is gonna be pointing right down and then bending sharp at the floor, or it's gonna be coming up. And then I don't have any room because we have such a small cavity behind the oven. So we'll go into a little bit more detail on that when we actually hook up the oven, but that's how we kind of plan ahead on electrical. And you can see all the boxes are ready to go. Our electricians call this looming, looming out a box. So it's all ready to go to connect our receptacles. So you've been watching our videos, you know, our stud pack and our Kings were five studs. Now we've got six. So why is there an extra one? We had to move these cabinets towards me away from the window. So that drawer would clear the window trim like we talked about. It pushed our upper cabinet to the left too. And remember, we always think ahead on our crown molding for our upper cabinets and it was gonna die into the drywall here. Now that we pushed it to the left, I had to add a stud so that that crown molding wasn't sticking out here. So I'm sure Richard from Finnish Carpentry and all your other Finnish carpenters out there will appreciate the fact that framers are planning ahead for the finishers. We are the finishers. We are the finishers. <laughs> and you'll also notice this little pony wall we built. We actually did a whole video on a pony wall behind an island. Make sure you go back and find that one. Very informative. The reason for this is because this little guy was added, this little spice pullout and we needed to hide the back of it. And it also gives us a place for our wires to come out right here for power under our peninsula. And check this out. We got our drywall delivered this morning and our insulation and five pounds of screws. The guys that brought it were super funny and they agreed to be on YouTube and we're gonna show you a little video of that right now. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a 
driveway slick, huh? Yes, sir. Yeah, just so we can work. Perfect. And they can get down that hall. Perfect. Appreciate it, guys. All right, gang. I got 12, 12 footers, 28 footers, and all the insulation to do this project and five pounds of screws. We all know how crazy lumber prices are and building material prices are. Drop us a comment. Let us know what you're paying where you are for this kind of stuff. But we're happy it's here and we're ready to go and hang this after our inspection tomorrow. You might notice it's a little bit dark on the job site today. That's because we don't have any power. The electricians pulled the meter this morning and they're changing the panel right now. Let's go outside and check on them. Hey Brian, how's it going? Hey, what's up, Paul? Looks I'm... good, man. Thank you, man. You check. mind you mind walking us through what you got going on here? Yeah, I had to uh, do a panel change out, but the way it was, we actually had to flip this panel upside down to make it work but it seems like everything's working out pretty good it's a 32 circuit uh ge panel uh change out and it's 150 amps yeah 150 amps man and the reason we had to turn it over is because this is the meter right yes sir and if we'd have put it the other way our main disconnect would have been way up here that's right which is too high for the code absolutely so yeah. that's the reason it's in this direction we got to do what we got to do to get it right man. there you go We're gonna get appreciate it right. that all right cool and i see that you got everything labeled for me on the old yeah. circuit so that uh all yep. our hard work on on identifying everything is not so we know it's, it's all going to change right yeah everything's yeah. changing here so we're writing a, a new panel schedule here we'll write what the old numbers were to get everything the way it should be to be marked right and i see we have a an interlock here for yeah. our for a generator yeah we're gonna put that interlock kit to make a, a safe to a startup on generator perfect make sure nobody else uh puts power to it while we got a generator right that's right very dangerous for the lineman so yes. that's awesome Absolutely. all right well, we'll get out of your way and let you keep going thanks god all right thanks man all right that was really cool the electricians are doing a great job in addition to them this week we got the plumber showing up he promised me he'd be here by the end of the week today is thursday it's thursday afternoon so hopefully today or tomorrow the reason i need a plumber is because of this washing machine drain this stand pipe where this drain goes into is inch and a half my inspector is going to want to see two inch right here where we live in baton rouge they make us upgrade that and change it so it's two inch pipe and a two inch trap into the two inch drain in the floor this is the inch and a half vent and it's fine but he's going to come here and fix that for us so we thought well while the plumber's here we better check out this kitchen sink drain over here because from previous experience we know that when we change from a six inch deep double bowl sink like this to the single bowl farm sink which is 10 inches deep we could have an issue with this drain being too high so the last thing you want to have happen on your project you install your cabinets your countertops your sink your plumber comes over to hook it up to your drain he gives you a call and says hey got a little problem over here what's up the drain coming out of the wall is too high and i can't hook up the disposal or your sinks to that drain i'm gonna have to cut open the back of the cabinets your new cabinets i'm gonna have to cut through the drywall your new drywall your new drywall and i gotta get in there and lower that pipe and it's gonna be 800 dollars. what i sure wish we had thought of that before well that's what we're doing right here we have a six inch deep sink we're going to a 10 inch deep sink all the plumbing drops four inches basically and in our experience this is too high so let's go over here we actually mocked it up for you and we're going to show you exactly what we're talking about all right let's go over here to our sink mock-up now we're a big believer in mock-ups it prevents a lot of problems in the future so here's our sink base remember our sink manufacturer does not make a farm sink base so we had to make our own we're going to show you that in another video that's not what this one's about we've got our farm sink sitting on these two spacers we simply used the lvls that we had left over from our beam install which lifted the sink to the proper height what's the proper height just below the countertop so we have a piece of three quarter inch plywood on top of a base cabinet as a subtop and this is a piece of sample stone and the proper height is you want the top of the sink just below this stone what's going to happen the stone installers are going to put a bead of silicone here put their counter on top for a watertight seal. So this is where this sink is supposed to go. Now here's something else we realized when we made the mock-up. That six inch deep stainless steel sink is sitting on top of the countertop. 
So the drain is right here, way up here, look at that. This 10 inch sink is even lower now because it's an undermount sink. So you can see how the drain on a farm sink is gonna be lower than the drain on a standard sink. And maybe not even a farm sink. You can get stainless steel sinks that are deeper inside, right? So what's the real benefit of this mock-up rather than a visual aid and to be able to take a couple of measurements? The real reason is you need to have your disposal and your trap and you need to cut a hole in the top of this sink base and you need to connect your disposal and let it hang here and connect your trap and then measure from your floor to the middle of that pipe where it's coming out of the disposal. And if you don't have a disposal, we'll just hook up the drain. You need to know where that pipe is gonna be, how far off the floor. And once you have that measurement compared to the one in your house, then you'll know if you need to lower that drain before the drywall goes up and save yourself a ton of cash. So on this project, we don't have our disposal, but what we do have is a pretty cool YouTube channel we found, something called what? Stud pack, Jordan? Yeah, I don't know who those guys are. About a year ago, we did a video on this exact subject, gang. Normally, we recommend that you go back and look at our previous videos. Jordan and I were watching that today, and I was like, man, how did you let me even put that on camera? <laughs> I was so dry. Well, we don't have our disposal, but this is the same sink base as that video, and this farm sink is the same height as the one in that video. So we know the middle of our drain is going to be 17 and a half inches from the finished floor to the middle of that drain. Over there on that wall, we're at 18. Might work, but I'm not comfortable with that. Much easier to have the plumber lower that thing by a couple inches, so that's what we're gonna do. The other thing you need to watch for is, are the water lines gonna be here? Because you don't want them behind the sink. Make sure your water lines are low enough. Also, ours are. So all that to say, we gotta lower that drain by two inches. But that two inches is worth about 800 bucks, because otherwise that plumber's crawling in that tiny cabinet and tearing it out to lower that drain. Yeah, would you wanna get in there? Heck no. <laughs> I'm just getting anxious thinking about it. But we have our electrical inspection tomorrow. We gotta to get ready for that. So I'm gonna turn Jordan loose on these nail plates. I usually estimate about how many I need and end up needing twice that many. So I just bought a box of 100. Jordan's gonna get going on that. I've already started and there's a project that I need to do. Let's walk over here and take a look at it. So we have a gas dryer in this house. It plugs into 120 volt for the motor. So they ran a 10-3 here, in case anybody ever needed an electric dryer, it's an easy conversion. So this 10-3 is feeding a 120 volt receptacle, which is fine. What we're gonna do is install a box that's gonna make it easier to convert in the future. What they did here, they surface mounted the box on this stud way down there, which is pushing this dryer out even farther than it needs to be, even with the vent hose. So just like we did on that range, with that four and 11 16 inch box, I got two and I'm gonna make this one for the dryer plug. And I'm gonna put a single gang ring on it for that 120 volt receptacle. If in the future, somebody wants to convert this to an electric dryer, they can get behind the dryer, cut out this drywall, remove that ring, install a two gang ring and put in the dryer plug. A dryer plug will fit this, but it's extremely tight. These are sharp edges. Do yourself a favor when you're installing a range plug or a dryer plug, get a two gang ring. It comes with four screws that's meant to screw here and here, and you get a big cover plate and you're done. So I'm gonna work on this. Jordan's gonna do cover plates and get ready for tomorrow. All right, I think that's the last nail plate. There's always one more, right? Right. So we are done. The electricians have the power back on, as you can see. The new panel looks awesome. And then we cross-referenced all the new breaker numbers against our old ones. So I'll redo this legend so the owners will have a perfect legend for the new panel. Tomorrow morning, the plumbers will be here at eight. Get those two items knocked out. Inspection is scheduled. Hopefully by this time tomorrow, We'll have gotten electrical and framing inspection done, and we will have this thing insulated. Fingers crossed, we appreciate it. So grab yourself a nail plate, put it over that like button so you pass inspection. Leave us a comment, ask a question, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one. <music>